Hello and welcome to the Bristol Ensemble at home. I hope you're all keeping well and safe and uh, doing lots of vigorous hand washing and of course keeping up that fitness regime. Today's uh, recital is all about Jeff Bach's Partita Number no. 3 in E major for unaccompanied violin. This is part of a group of six works that he wrote and completed in 1720. So it was a bit of a year for a, a lot of people then, as it was also the year of the bubonic plague, which thankfully uh, Bach managed to survive. Moving swiftly on, let's get a, uh, have a little look at the E major partita. Um, it's basically six movements, five that are dedicated dance movements. Um, the first movement is a prelude, which is an introduction to all the dance movements. Uh, in this prelude, Bach uses a particular composition technique, violin technique called griolage, and he uses it ex extensively through the whole movement. It's a very, very fine example of griolage. Griolage is crossing over two strings, with one string remaining the same pitch, and the other string alternating the pitch. So we have an effect like this. string E string is being repeated and the underneath line is the moving line. That could also go the other way around. So we could have the top string moving and the underneath string staying the same. Now there's a particularly fine example of realage that Bach's written in this, this work. And it's over three strings, not two. And it looks like this. It's an absolutely wonderful moment of descending harmonies against an open E string. So we have the open E string, the G sharp, and then over to the D string, another E. And it starts like this. It's like the Briolage of all Briolages, if you like. And really, I haven't heard one any better than that. Then we move on to the next movement, which is the Law, or Lore. Um, quite a fast dance, actually, although um, there are different versions of tempos for the Law. Um, it's in a, a fast version, it would sound like this. like that, um, but as we haven't really got a dedicated slow movement, we're going to take the slower version of the Laura for this one, and it will come out a little bit more laid back and sophisticated if you like, and it will sound something like this. slow movement for this particular partita. The next movement is a gavotte, and what a fantastic uh, example of a gavotte as well. Uh, Bach uses rondo form for this, uh, so you get a rondo, a theme, if you like, uh, and that travels all the way through the piece. Uh, you get to hear that five times, and in between that there's a variation um, of on, the, on the theme. So we get something like this. This is the theme. So you'll hear that five times over all, one at the beginning, then in two in the middle, and the whole work, the whole movement finishes that as well. And in between some wonderful little uh, variations on that. We then move on to the minuet. He's, and rather than writing one movement here, he's written two minuets. Um, the first minuet is very straightforward in terms of style, and what you would expect from a minuet, I guess. 
And the second minuet is a much more sophisticated um, type of, uh, a bit of writing, and he uses more of a stop, double stopping, um, but with a drone effect, and also off, cutting off the first beat at one point as well, so it's very unusual writing. Sounds a little bit like this. After that, we have the bore, and that's a kind of kind of boisterous little number. Um, I might remember Benjamin Britten from the Simple Symphony, and he starts with uh, a bore to open the whole work, and he calls that bore. It's a boisterous bore just to capture the, the the feeling of it. And the whole work finishes with a short G. Um, obviously, you know, sort of after the dancing jig type. Type music again. It's a fairly short movement, and I think in time it must be the shortest of all the movements of the whole six uh, pieces put together, works put together. So he obviously got to the end of this series of six works and felt, I'm just going to sign off with something very simple, very beautiful, but we're just going to leave it in the air, if you like. And so he does. It's just a lovely little one. Just something very, very simple, very light. So, there we have it. That's the um, Sonata Number no. 3 in E major, and I'll just do my whole work.
Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the party number three in E major by Bach, and hopefully it will encourage you to go off and listen to the rest of the suite, and there's obviously a few of the cello ones as well, and keyboard, so there's a, there's a whole lifetime of music there to study. Thank you very much. Um, the next rehearsal, no, the next, not rehearsal, recital today, is on Thursday. And actually, rather than a recital, we've got a really interesting talk by Jonathan James, who will be looking at Sibelius, and particularly Sibelius Symphony Number no. 5, which will be a really great exploration for, for me and for everybody else. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderfully uplifting work, so I hope you will join us for that one as well. Um, so that's it. That's all from me in Bergen. I uh, hope you uh, remain healthy and free of this um, wonderful coronavirus that we're all having to deal with. Um, look forward to the time when we're all together actually in one place on stage. Thank you very much for today. Bye-bye.